the title of the class is very simple. Change or go to hell. Because we in this truth, like the deacon was bringing out last week, scriptures after scriptures, class after classes, and we're still going through the same problems. So that means you don't want to change. So the choice is very simple. You either change and make it to the kingdom, or don't change and go to hell. So the choice is yours. So the title is Change or Go to Hell. We're going to start with John 3, verse 19. John 3, verse 19. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 19. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. So that's what's going to condemn us in this world. We like darkness more than we like light. Because Christ is the light. He came and showed us the way to live, right? But instead, we rather choose to do things that we want to do. But the things that we want to do, they're going to get you killed, period. So it's better that you choose to live according to the light. Read. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. So that's the main reason why people don't like coming to the light, because what we are, when you're about these laws, what this truth is about, reproof and correction. But anytime you don't like correction, then you're not walking in the light. You see people like they're shy away from you. They used to talk to you and then they shy away. Funny enough, at the time they shy away, when they resurface, you realize they've done a whole bunch of garbage. That's why if you're if you're a person that walk in the light, you're gonna that's gonna happen a lot. You're gonna see people that develop a friendship with you. Once you start correcting them, then slowly but surely they shy away from you. Because why? They don't want you to reprove them. They're afraid of the light because their deeds is evil. Because every time they walk next to you, you're always checking them on their sins. Therefore, they don't want to be around. They slowly fade away from you. Because the moment you step in the light, what happened? Everything is seen. So that's what those laws are supposed to do. If you're walking in the law, anybody that come next to you with sin, you're supposed to what? Rebuke them. After we rebuke somebody so much so, if they're evil, are they going to want to be around you? They're only going to want to be around people that's what? Buttering them up. Oh, don't worry. You're going to be all right. No, y'all going to die together. That's basically what's going to happen. Don't butter up people's sins. Fix it, fix it, fix it, or you're going to go to hell. Let's go to 1 John 3 and 10. First John chapter 3 verse 10. The book of 1 John chapter 3 verse 10. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. So there's a very simple mathematics to decipher who is of the devil and who is of God. If you do not do righteousness, you are of the devil. Because the devil and righteousness don't go hand in hand. Who can tell me what is righteousness? I need a precept. Bad. Deuteronomy 6, 25. Let's read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. So it shall be our righteousness if you do these things before God. So go back to 1 John again. The book of 1 John chapter 3 verse 10. In this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever does not righteousness is not of God. You see that? If you're not doing righteousness, you are not of God. Let's go to Psalm 106, verse 3. Let's see if righteousness is something that you do only on the Sabbath. Because some of us, that's the only time we hold it. That's it. Throughout the week, we're the devil the Bible speaks of. So we don't communicate with anybody that's in the, in the truth. We just separate ourselves into our own little world doing whatever you do. That's you living in darkness. Because the scriptures say, they, they that believe in Malachi, um, them that believe speak often one to, another, to one another. So if you're in this truth, and you find yourself throughout the week not speaking to people in the truth, 
or you only speak to people in the truth that butter you up, then you're not looking to change. You're basically begging for the most high to kill you. Because weeks after weeks, year after year, day of torment after day of torment, nothing is changing. Eventually, the most high is going to grow tired of you and he's going to screw you out. Let's read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 106, verse 3. Blessed are they that keep judgment, and he that doeth righteousness at all times. No, only on Saturdays. At all times. Maybe on Mondays. At all times. Okay, Saturday and Wednesday. And he that doeth righteousness at all times. At all times, seven days a week. Seven days a week. You're always looking to do righteously. Give me Philippians 2 and 12. Every day of your life, you got to focus on fixing yourself. <coughs> but how can that happen if you're not examining yourself? How can that happen if you're not around people that can t tell you about yourself? And us as brothers and sisters, we can't be afraid to tell somebody about themselves either. Regardless of rank or... or, or rank or uh, uh, years you've been in truth, it doesn't matter. Correction is for everybody. Because as a body, we're trying to heal the body, right? So we can get salvation. So why would I want to see you in sin and I'm just sitting back and watch you? Then that means what? I don't care about you. Read that. The book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only. So this is not the only time we're supposed to be righteous. Not only in people's presence. Read. But now much more in my absence. Much more in my absence. When you're on your own, righteousness should be on your mind. Much more. Why? Because now you, the temptation is greater. Because there's nobody around you to prevent you from doing the things that you want to do. So you got to be twice as focused. Because brothers who, 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 who battle porn, right now you're sitting in class, you're not thinking about porn. You're among brothers, but when you're on your own, that's when that demon really jump on you. So this is why I say much more in my absence. So you got to keep yourself occupied. This is why you, you call brothers, you visit brothers. Same thing with sisters. Watch videos, read, always have something to do. That's going to keep you in that righteous uh, mind frame. Read. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You see that? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You got to want this. And if you want this, you're going to be around people that can help you check yourself. The scripture says it covered good gifts, right? So if you see you're lacking something and another person has it, guess who you need to be around? That person. That's what the scripture says, so right, if you see a man of understanding, give him be time. We're at the doorsteps, but many of us, we just like to be by ourselves. Singing around our horse, high and mighty, like, I ain't going to visit nobody. I'm not talking to nobody. I'm doing me. Well, guess what? You're going to end up in hell because none of us can make it on our own. That's why the scripture call it a body. We need each other to help each other fix ourselves. Go back to 1 John. So much more in my absence. When you're on your own, you gotta move, you gotta be twice as hard on yourself. Read. The book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 10. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. So just because you're here, if you find yourself not doing righteousness, if you find yourself hate, having hate, hatred in your heart for your brother or your sister, you are of the devil. It's very simple. And how to say, you can fool the people sometimes, but you cannot fool all the people all the time. Your secrets will be discovered and you will be put out. Because the Mosai is very patient with every single one of us. Because why? We came from a, sin, a sinner's mind, uh, state of mind. That's how we live. So now that we're in this truth, this, the truth is supposed to change us. And if we're in the truth years after years, years after years, and there's no change that's happening, what that says about you? You're living in sin. Think about this. I post that I, um, I go to the gym. And then, let's say one day you decide to come with me and I can't even lift two pounds. But I'm always talking about how much I'm in the gym. Then what you gonna think of me? I'm a liar. Now you start wondering, damn, I wonder what, it, what, what where he goes when he says he goes to the gym. Because the dude can't even lift two pounds. 
Or I'll be posting that I run, I'll be running eight miles. You know what I'm saying? Let's say now there's a new brother that comes in the body that's a runner. And you say like, oh, you be running, Officer Gideon be running too. <laughs> Set up some. Can't even do half a mile. <laughs> Eventually, your secrets will be exposed. So it's better that a brother or sister correct you and you fix yourself than to add sin unto sin unto sin unto sin unto sin and then one day just fall out. So the scripture said, not as... Um, Read it again. God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. So the key word is doeth. You have to do the laws. It's not just come to the congregation and listen to class and go home feel good about yourself. Ooh, I'm in the truth. Where your friend? No, every, you gotta do righteousness. If you're not doing righteousness, you not of God. And in this one, it touches something very important. Neither he that love it, not his brother. How do you show you love to your brother? Huh? Correction. Is, uh, is that that's your own word? Prove it. I need proof. Who, who got proof? Go ahead. Leviticus 19 verse 17. Let's read it. Because some people might think it's our own way of doing things. Oh, I, I see this. I, I see that. Well, guess what? Let's see what the Bible says. <clears throat> the book of Leviticus. Chapter 19 verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So that's our law. Your heart is your mind. You can't be sitting among brothers and sisters, but deep inside, you know you hate everybody's guts. The scripture said, don't do that. Three. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So if you got problem with your uh, uh, brother, you see your brother in sin, or deep in your heart you feel strongly a, uh, that the person wronged you, hatch it out. Rebuke that person, correct it. Don't sit back and then harboring hatred in your heart. You destroying your own self. That's like you giving yourself poison every day in a small dosage. One day you're gonna die. Read. Thou I know. Uh, uh, yeah, finish it. Thou shalt not avenge. No, no that's. Uh, sorry. Go back to First John. The book of First John, verse eleven. Now, chapter three, verse eleven. For this is the message that ye've heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. So that's the scripture that right there. We should love one another from the very beginning that was given to us as a law. But many of us have a different love for one another. Read verse 12. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Stop. What then Adam and Eve gave birth to Cain? So why does scripture say he was of that wicked one? Because if you're not doing righteousness, you are of the devil. And he rules over you. So Cain didn't love his brother. He was not doing righteousness. Because Cain was supposed to do what? Bring animal sacrifice, right? He said, nope, food and vegetables for you. I'm going to be rebellious. And I'm going to look at my brother who's prospering and hate him for it. Meanwhile, had he, has he, had he done what his brother had done, most I would have looked up on him too. Because that's exactly what the scripture said. If you do well, would you not be accepted? So Cain was jealous because he was rebellious and then because of his own sin, he started hating his brother. Instead of fixing his own sin. So the scripture said, don't love each other as Cain loved Abel. Because you know that was pure hatred. Read. And slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. So many a time we look in people with a hateful heart. Really is because we know we, we, we foul. So we, what, how we view ourselves, we, we look at that person the same way as well. So let's examine ourselves and get back on track. Because God sees all. Give me Jeremiah 17 and 10. You gotta want to be like Abel, not Cain. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. Start at 9. Verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So if you don't know what's in your heart, the most I just let you know. 
Nothing but wickedness is in your heart. There's only one thing that can cleanse your heart, which is the law, statutes, and commandments. You must apply those things in your life daily. Meditate on the scriptures daily to purge you of all wickedness that's already in you. From your youth up, you've been wicked. So now you got the laws, let the Lord do its work. Trust in the Bible. Trust in correction. Because anybody as a kid who their parents is not correcting them, guess what? That parent hates you. So the person that corrects you in this truth, that's a person that loves you. If they if they if I'm not correcting them, I mean I don't care about you. I see you going down the wrong path, like, hey, whatever. Do you? Read. Verse 10. I the Lord search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. So God is the one that's going to repay you. You can fool me. You can fool Kamal. You can fool Elijah. You can fool every single man in here. You cannot fool God. You cannot fool God. So God, if you keep going the way you're going, God is going to pay you back. Because it says, I, the Lord, search the heart. God, search you out and try you to see what you're about. And based on what you're about, he's going to give you according to your fruit. The fruits are in the book of Galatians. So if you want to know what fruit uh, is, uh, is deserving of good reward, what fruit is deserving of bad rewards. So, based on the fruit you're producing, that's how the Most High going to deal with you. It's very simple. And the number one thing is the love that we must have for one another. That's the one thing the scripture stretches, stresses a lot. We must, we must love one another. Not hate one another because how can the Most High dwell in a body that where people hate each other? Why would the Most High continue blessing you if you're walking around harboring hatred in your heart for your brothers or your sisters? The scripture clearly say, forgive your brother the hurt that he has done to you. Let it go. Because if you hold on to it, it's going to eat you up like a cancer. And in that process, you end up destroying yourself. Meanwhile, the person that did you the wrong, they already got over it. They apologized many a time. Then their conscience is clean. It's you now that's keep harboring that hatred. Guess what? You're gonna get destroyed and watch the person that you hate so much make it to the kingdom. First off, I would like to thank God Almighty for giving everybody so much and me so little. I hate you. I hate you. I don't even know you and I hate your guts. I hope all the bad things in life happen to you and nobody else but you. And as I sip my soda that I'm sure somebody spit in. You see that? That's many of us in the spirit. We just hate, 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 hate for no reason. We want all the bad things that happen in life to happen to the people that we hate. Well, guess what? Be careful. There's a proverb back when I'm translating the word for it. Be careful what you wish for your stepmother that might happen to your mom. Mm -hmm. So, stop hating. How can you be an IUIC and hate IUIC at the same time? I don't understand, man. Just go join them uh, BHI brothers. Then you have a reason to hate. But if you're here, let's learn how to love one another. Um, read that verse 10 again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17. Verse 10, I the Lord search the heart, I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his doings. See that? According to your, the fruits of your doing, that's how the Most High is going to repay you. So it won't be long, judgment will come towards you if you keep hating on your brother or sister. Give me First John 4, verse 20. The book of First John. Chapter 4, verse 20. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? So how can you be around brothers and sisters and you hate them, but you're talking about, I love you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are a liar. And the truth is not in you. 
So which means you don't know God. Because we're supposed to see Christ in each other, right? Yes, sir. So how can you love somebody that you never seen, but yet you hate people that you can't see every day? No way you can love God if you hate your brothers and sisters. So you're walking in what? Huh? You're walking in darkness. Now, if I'm walking in darkness, what's going to happen to me eventually? I'm going to fall. Because if I'm walking in darkness, can I see what's in front of me? So don't let your sins blind you to the point where you destroy your own self. Let's go to Matthew 22, 35. Matthew 22, verse um, 35. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 35. Then one asked of them, which was a lawyer, asked them a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So on these two commandments hang everything. If you love God, Will you not keep the Sabbath? If you love God, will you uh, not? Would you have another God before Him? So, the first one touch the first five commandments. The second one deals with your brother. If you love your brother, you're not going to commit adultery. You're not going to commit fornication. You're not going to steal from your brother. So those two laws encompass the whole Bible. So if I love God, can I hate my brother? You see? They, these two are intertwined. You must love your brother if you want to show love to the Most High God. Simple as that. Read it again. Which one? On these two? Yes, sir. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. On these two commandments hang all the laws and all the prophets. Love. Love is what? Who can tell me what is love? So does that mean I walk around and start hugging and kissing everybody? Go ahead, give the mic to uh, Jailson. First um, John um, six. Second John verse six. Oh man, he recovered. <laughs> <laughs> the book of Second John, chapter six. I mean, excuse me, verse six. And this is love that we walk after His commandments. This is the commandment. That as ye have heard from the beginning. That's not what we read in First John. What commandment we heard from the beginning? Love one another, not as Cain and Abel. So to have to to have love is to basically walk in the law, statutes, and commitments. So if I have fault with my brother, and I keep walking around like it ain't nothing, then I'm not displaying love. That's hatred. And whosoever hate his brother is a what? A murderer. Can murderers make it to the kingdom if they don't change? <laughs> so you see, that's why we gotta constantly examine ourselves to see are we walking in the spirit? Are we letting our feelings guide us? How we feel about things? Give me Matthew 18, verse 15. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Now, hold it in and harbor hatred towards that person. Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Read. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will hear not, excuse me, but if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more. That in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. So the whole purpose of this, if you notice, there's steps, right? There's steps that are taken to win back your brother or your sister. That's the whole objective of Matthew 18. In trying to win you back. So if the if your spirit is right, then once we hatch it out, guess we cool. 
But many a time, you discuss a matter, and supposedly hatched out, but guess what? You realize you were still walking around full of hatred. You're still not over it, so the problem is not the person that you have a problem with, the problem is you. Because you have no forgiveness in your heart whatsoever. What if, think about this, look at your attitude and ask yourself, what would Jesus do? What if Jesus was to hold against you a grudge such as you're holding against your brother or your sister? Would you get the kingdom? So shouldn't we be Christ-like? Then Christ forgive all our sins? Yes, sir. Because if any of you guys think like you're worthy for the kingdom, raise your hand. But he had mercy on you. Every creature in Christ is a new creature, right? Before you set foot in the truth, think of all the vileness you did. But Christ, the most high God, has forgive you. But yet, you cannot find in your heart to forgive your brother or your sister. Something wrong with you. You are of the devil. That's the only way I could put it. So it's time for you to apply 2 Corinthians and examine yourself. To see, are you in the faith? It's very simple. The scripture says, don't hate my brother. Do I hate my brother? Yes, I do. You are the devil the Bible speaks of. So, what is the solution? Go to Amos, chapter 3, verse 3. Actually, before Amos, go to James, chapter 4, verse 7. James, chapter 4, verse 7. <laughs> Submit yourselves therefore to God Resist the devil and he will flee from you You see that people? You must fight Who are you going to fight? Yourself because you got the damn devil on you Resist the devil that's plaguing you And he will flee from you When those evil thoughts come in your head Fight it off If you don't have the strength to fight it off Pick up the phone, call somebody And talk to them openly Maybe the most I might move that person to give you a scripture that's going to help you or appease the spirit that's in you. Like Saul, when he had a certain demon on him, only David could play the, 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 the harp and then to calm the evil spirit down. So you, certain spirit, you cannot fight it on your own. This is why you need brothers and sisters. Because if you see months, years going on, the spirit is still on you, then guess what? That spirit has overcome you. So you need outside help. But how can you get it if you don't speak? A closed mouth don't get fed. If, if, am I right or, no, or wrong? Right. If I close my mouth, no matter how much food is in front of me, am I eating? Yes, sir. So if you have problems and you need solutions, you got to open your mouth and speak. But if you want to harbor everything in, inside, you're going to explode one day. So uh, confess your sins one to another if you want healing. Let's go to Amos. No. Three and three. The book of Amos, chapter three, verse three. Can two walk together except they be agreed? So the scripture clearly says two people cannot walk together unless they're in agreement. So we're all supposed to be here under the spirit of the Most High God. And that's only going to continue if we stay in that spirit. If we choose to venture off and go about establish our own righteousness, Eventually, you're going to be out those doors. Because demons will come in the truth, but they won't last. And after you leave, yeah, another demon going to come. But each demon eventually will leave. Because this is the house of the Most High God. Demons cannot last long. This is not the place where you're going to fake it till you make it. You're going to fake it, and you're going to get kicked out. You cannot hide from your, from, from your sin. The most I will expose you, bottom line. So if you don't believe it, continue. Let's see how far you go. Let's see if this Passover you're still here. If you don't overcome. Because the most, uh, doing Passover, what happened? Purge the leaven, right? Yes, sir. So take heed. Fix yourself, or the most I'm going to purge you out. Um, you, uh, give me 1 Corinthians 9 24. The two, two, the only time, the only way we're gonna stay together only if we stay in the same spirit. Because if you don't want to be in the spirit of the Most High God, eventually He's gonna spew you out. Does the Most High deal with people that's lukewarm? Nah, He said, "I prefer that you were cold or hot, because you are lukewarm. I'm gonna spew you out my mouth." 
So get hot, get hot for the truth, or be cold in the world. You can't fake it in here. Read that. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 9, verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run, that ye may obtain. So, how many people is familiar with uh, track and field? Okay. How many of you knows about relays? Who can give, give me an Go ahead, Ephraim. What happened at a 4x4? Four four? So, there's four people running. So you're gonna Against pick. each other? No. But they, they work as a team. Okay. So, uh, and how it goes? Alright, so there's four people, and they each, each of them got to run. So there's a stick, and then you run. That person pass the stick to the other person, depends on him to get on time with the other person, and so forth. The other person, the last person, it depend on him to finish the race in a certain time. Exactly. So for that team to win the race, everything got to be done perfectly. Timing, the exchanges of the baton, got to be done properly. And everybody got to run as hard as they can. That's the body. We all must do our be the best job we can do for this troop in order for us to grow. So at any time there's a hindrance in one person, it's going to affect the whole body. Because if it's my time now to pass the baton to you, and I just stand there and just play with it, we cannot recover that. That time is lost. Because it's a fast race. So we got to run this race to win. But this is a relay because we we're doing it as a team. It's not an individual race, even though you must put your individual effort in. But you got to understand you're not doing it for you, you're doing it for the body. So at every given time you choose not to do what you're supposed to do, you become a hindrance to the body. Then eventually, because we are the winning team, the most I have to replace you. He will forbear with you for a moment, but when he sees that classes after class, council after council, um, scriptures after scriptures, day of atonement after day of atonement, fasting after fasting, nothing is changing, he's going to screw you up. Because the scripture clearly says, I, the Lord, search the reign of men, search the heart of men, and try their reign, and give every man according to his fruits. So, if you don't have those good fruits, love, righteousness, you don't have these things in you, you ain't going to make it. Sure. Do you know what the Most High means when he says he's going to try your reins? What that means is, you ever see a horse? And you ever see that the horse can't do anything unless you pull the reins to push the horse into the direction that you want the horse to go in? The Most High said he knows our hearts and he tries our reins. Meaning he puts us in certain positions and predicaments to see what we are going to do. That's a very heavy scripture. I just want to elaborate on that. Continue reading. Good point. Verse 25. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 9, verse 25. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. Get ready. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. Read. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So your purpose in this truth, you're supposed to strive to be greater. So you, in this truth, you keep striving and striving to be greater. And you must keep your body under your body and bring it unto subjection. That means submit, help your body to submit unto the laws of God. If not, you're going to be a castaway. Shalom. Shalom. I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ.
YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.